Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome, everybody, to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Ipatia, CEO and founder of JSA. Along with my fabulous co-host, Mr. Evan Purcell, top B2B social media influencer. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us with Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading data center world, supporting the infrastructure requirements of this new normal. So, Jamie, summertime is upon us. Yeah. I'm here in New England. You're from New England. You're going to head back to beautiful Rhode Island, your, your place of birth. Yeah, my, my family is dying for me to get back there. Um, I'm on the West Coast currently, and as you know, I had a baby during quarantine, so uh, she doesn't know so many of her aunts, uncles, grandmas. Aww. Uh, so yeah, we're we're really excited to uh, to head back home, and it's such a fabulous time, New England summertime. Uh, it's um, you know everything is just uh, ripe, and and the smell of flowers in the air, and it's just. Oh, uh, no, it's really great. And, and Rhode Island, especially uh, Newport, Rhode Island, one of my favorite summertime destinations. What's your favorite place in New England or, or Rhode Island? What are, what are you going to look forward to getting back to? Yeah, Newport is, is sensational. My cousin Lauren lives there and uh, there's like tons of um, historic uh, uh, mansions. Uh, oh, the mansions. Yeah. yeah. The, the cottages, as they called them back in the day. Yes. yes it's called cottages, darling. Teddy Astor's and, you know, uh, and when I was a little girl, one of the, uh, I actually think it was the Astor Mansion, uh, used to dress up in period clothing and give tours. And I remember- Oh my gosh, what I, would, what I would pay to see those pictures, I tell you, that yeah. would be Twitter gold. But why don't we move on to our guest and, uh, and get on with the show? Yeah, then we have an exciting show. Let's get right into it with our, our guest. Um, as you know, here at Data Movers, we really do like to dive into those background stories, careers, highs, lows, everything in between. And today's guest really offers that unique perspective of the future of our industry. So please welcome David Leggett. He's the founder and CEO of Data Center Hawk and fellow fellow uh, podcaster. Hey, David. That's right. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Great, <laughs> great. Thank you. Welcome, David. And I've just been spending the last 20 minutes on Data Center hawk.com what an amazing resource I, I really got lost on on the site so tell us about your background and your career and what led you to get into the data center industry and create this amazing resource uh yeah well thank you for the opportunity to be on i'm excited to get to interact with both of you uh you know we started data center hawk back six years ago and i actually got into the data center industry back in 2007 by accident um, you know it's funny many people get into this industry by accident but then you find they stay in it for a long time because of uh how dynamic it is and the opportunities that there are but i uh, joined a, a real estate company at the time cbre which is well known to many people uh in our in our industry and uh just started learning how um clients of CBREs at the time were thinking about their data center infrastructure. So I had the opportunity to do a lot of work with uh, Fortune 500 companies that were trying to either evaluate things like co-location or evaluate things like site selection where they wanted to build uh, a data center facility. And so through, through that process, uh, found that there was really a hole in the way that the data center information was being you know, uh, aggregated, analyzed, presented to the market. Um, and so you had a lot of people spending a lot of money uh, and doing it with data that, in my opinion, wasn't great. And so in 2014, we set out to start Data Center Hawk. And our mission is really simple. We, we help uh, industry users make the best decisions possible. And, and so we do that with data, uh, not just here in the US, but also in Europe and Asia. And uh, we've got a great team. We sit here in Dallas. We have team members overseas as well. And uh, we're really thankful to be in this space, and it's been uh, an exciting um, and challenging and really fun last six years in doing this. Oh, that's so cool. And, and again, you're sort of sitting in a very unique uh, position. You have this, this eagle eye perspective, Hawkeye, I should say. Yeah, uh, yeah there you go. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on the industry. So what are the top trends that you know, most excite you? Yeah, that's a great, great question. You know, I think some of the things that we're seeing, this is like real time 
um, info because, you know, we're consistently talking to people in the market, obviously, um, you know, similar to what Jamie, your, your approaches, um, there with your podcast and some of the things that you're doing, but some of the, the messages that we're hearing that are impacting the space today, you know, certainly one is sustainability. So yesterday or a couple of days ago, uh, I was in a discussion with data center dynamics around how, um, you know, that is impacting the market and how we're seeing that not just pay um, or, or play into how large data center users are thinking about how do we deploy this, these massive amounts of infrastructure, uh, but also data center operators that are helping with that are thinking through um, how to do that in a more um, eco-friendly way. And so you see that with the way that um, data centers are being designed today. You see that in the way that, um, you know, people in the space are thinking about water usage and doing that in a more efficient manner. Uh, but I'll tell you what else has been interesting is we've also seen it focused on with like these small to medium sized businesses and really thinking through like, Hey, we want to make sure that we are participating in, um, you know, a sustainable approach to the industry moving forward. That's certainly a trend that we've seen. And I think most people in our space would, you know, agree that's a, it's kind of a very broad topic, but, um, but it's something that is, front and center with a lot of the users and people in the market today. Yeah, really impressive. I'm actually on datacenterhawk.com now and your site is incredible. It, it really kind of keeps a pulse on the data center markets around the world and uh, you know, up-to-date information. It's amazing communities. What, what particular markets or geographies are most interesting to you these days and, and why? I, I love that question, Evan. Thank you for asking because we... You know, it has been so interesting to watch these different geographies grow over the last, I mean, I would say a Dazzler Hawk six years, but really last 15. And I think those that are in the space really would, would understand this. But, you know, like as an example, in the U.S., the top five data center markets are, are Northern Virginia, Chicago, Phoenix, Dallas, and Northern California. There's other markets like Atlanta and Portland where there's really exciting stuff going on. Um, but I have been most intrigued with what has been going on in both Europe and Asia over the last two years. So um, in Europe, the top five markets are, are Frank, uh, Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris, and Dublin. Uh, but but if you, if you want to see something that's really interesting, watch how some of these secondary markets are growing, like Zurich, uh, Berlin, um, you know, areas like that, Madrid. Uh, there's a lot of growth taking place in those areas, and, and it's it's a maturing of those markets that I think will point to like some future growth moving forward. Um, and so, you know, those are some of the, the types of, of places that we're paying a special attention to because there's a lot of demand. There's a lot of companies that go, Hey, we want to make sure that we can serve our Latin America communities or um, our, uh, you know, European customers the same way we can serve them in the U S and, and that experience is the same or in other places across the world. So those are, those are some of the markets that, you know, we see really gaining traction today. Um, it's, you're singing my song. I'm, I'm, I'm in love with this conversation. Um, yeah. and, and it's interesting too, this, uh, this move to tier two cities uh, globally um, yep. which, uh, is, is right in line with a question that we're throwing out to our clients in our Ask the Experts feature uh, that we do every month. Uh, but uh, this month, we're asking our edge data centers uh, to give us their thoughts and opinions on, is the edge still edgy? I want to see, do you, maybe, what will be your response here? Yes, I, I think it is. There's a lot of money being spent right now to try to solve what is a current demand state, but what people think will really grow into a much larger um, demand down the road. And, and so I, I certainly think it is one of the challenges with it, I think has been, it's maybe been a bit slower. The maturity has maybe been a bit slower than uh, the companies that are out there working on it, you know, might, might've thought, but I really think that this is something that will impact the market for years to come. I think, you know, our, our industry is really unique because there's trade shows and things like that. And so we talk about a lot of stuff and maybe sometimes we overhype things or maybe we hype things too early, but, but I really think that uh, edge and the growth of edge deployments as, you know, things like 5G become more mature and more widely used and, 
uh, will certainly impact our space. And the companies that are out there trying to build product or that have built and are building products and solutions to serve that, I think will win over time. You know, if there's one thing we've seen about this space is that early investment in some of these um, emerging trends can really pay off. And I think the edge market is certainly one of them. So is the edge still edgy, Jamie? It's a great question. I would say yes. I would agree, absolutely. And you know, the data center space has been on fire uh, during the pandemic for obvious reasons and data center professionals have been among the busiest folks out there, yeah. what, uh, including yourself, I'm guessing. What are some of the key takeaways that, that data center professionals have kind of learned through the pandemic and you know, what does it mean for their careers uh, moving forward, do you think? Yeah, well, this has been a very unique time for all of us, um, I think, both professionally and personally. And, and it's been one of those time periods, I know, for me personally, where you've had to, um, you know, really take a look around and, and uh, be thankful for uh, a lot of the things that are going on. You know, and one of them certainly is to be in our, our industry, probably like you both. I have friends that are part of industries that overnight changed significantly and really it impacted their job opportunities. It impacted companies they had spent years building. And you all know as well as I do when you're an entrepreneur and you're starting something and you spend all that time uh, and then something totally outside of your control changes that it's, it's very hard. And so I think in the data center space, um, Evan, you, you mentioned it. I mean, it has been frenetic. Um, and whether you are a data center operator, an investor in the space, a consultant, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's really been, there's been a lot of things happening. And so my takeaways are number one is I'm really thankful uh, that, you know, our business has grown. I'm sure like many others of people that are uh, listening uh, in this industry. So that's one thing too. It really shows you the resiliency of our space uh, in this industry, um, you know, and it, and, and I would say that the pandemic really shined a light on our industry differently than it had before. And I think there's some good things. There's also some challenges with that. You know, the good things are, I think people realize there's this invisible, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure that supports literally almost everything we do. You know, when you think about the way we use our phones, the way we use technology at home, I mean, all those different things, that's a big, big part of it. Um, but I think too, the challenges are, people are starting to, you know, think through even some of that sustainability um, commentary that we, we talked about at the beginning of the call or the, the podcast that, you know, this is a, an industry that uses a lot of power, a lot of water. And, and so really thinking through that, well, you know, I think people are paying attention to that probably more today than they were 18 months ago. So uh, I know personally, and for us at data center Hawk, we are certainly thankful to be in this space and we're, you know, really excited about what the future opportunities are. And I would imagine that most people in our industry would agree. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Um, so that kind of moves us into uh, our fun, fast, rapid fire question section. Can't wait. <laughs> so we're going to throw out some questions at you and you just think about, uh, respond with whatever pops into your head first. So um, I love this one, actually. Um, what is the most used app when you uh, go, go to your phone? Unfortunately, my calendar is probably the, the first thing I would bring up, and I'm not sure that that really uh, qualifies for a, a very good answer, but I feel like, you know, uh, I am just constantly looking at my schedule and the changes that are going, all that stuff. I would say uh, I have a, a group of people that I run with here. We, we uh, uh, so there's a fitness app that we'll look at that's that I probably use uh, maybe too much to, to check in on things, but um, those two those two apps probably get the most amount uh, of activity on my phone. That's a good balance. That's a good balance. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last last guest answered email, so we're we're at least we're diversifying oh. the productivity apps. But um, absolutely. Uh, but uh, as far as smart technology goes, I'm sure you're a techie as we are, and you know one of my favorite applications is smart home tech, you know, the internet of things at home. And my favorite is my Philips Hue lighting where I can change the mood and the colors and the right intensity on. of all, all the lights and, and automate it, you know, when I walk in or leave, but what's the smartest tech you're currently using at home? I, you know, the one we use 
probably the most is the one that controls our like temperature in the home, I would say is just doing that in a more, um, you know, appropriate manner. Uh, and it's also great to, you know, if you're traveling or something like that, to be able to, to, to do that. I think that's certainly one of them, you know, another, another one that we, so we have two, um, kids, our boys are, I guess like 15 and 11. And so we have really, uh, tried not always done our best, but we've really tried to monitor like technology usage and, and just really thinking through proactively, like, Hey, how are we helping our kids learn how to use technology well? And I think all parents struggle with this, like just thinking through that. And, 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 and so there's some really cool apps that help parents. And so if you're a parent in this phase, um, you know, uh, th this is hopefully helpful, but there's some really cool apps that help you kind of keep track of, of what your kids are doing and then help helping kind of stair-stepping them into like appropriate technology usage, you know, cause when you give a kid a smartphone, it's a lot of, there's a lot of things that, you know, they can use that for. And so just helping them do that wisely and thinking through that, uh, something my we kids, tried to I, do. I, I think I need this app. I, I think someone <laughs> needs to monitor my, sure. my Twitter usage. Jamie, do you want to be my parental guy here <laughs> and help me? Okay. I, I keep my tweeting, tweeting down to 18 it. hours a day. Yeah. I get it. Well, it, you know, I think, Evan, it's funny you say that because I think what it shows is that we've, you know, we've become so dependent on technology. All of us have. And it's a, uh, it's a learn, in my opinion, it's a learned skill. And there's definitely, there's definitely value in helping, especially our kids thinking through how to do that. Well, and like, I don't know about you all, but when I grew up, it, there was not that type of technology opportunity, you know, it's very different. And so you're just growing up in a different world. And so just trying to help them think through that well is, is, uh, is, you know, where we're at right now. Nice. I have a basket full of toys and my one-year-old also wants to play with his toy, like fake cell phone. Yeah. Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it I'm starts trouble. early. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be? And what would you chat about? Uh, so I am unfortunately and fortunately a Dallas sports fan. And, uh, I, so the Dallas Mavericks, uh, have a player named Luka Doncic and I think it oh, would probably, I would love, yeah, he's unbelievable. So I would actually love right now specifically to go to lunch with him and ask him who he's going to pick to be their next coach, which is a little unique because players don't typically pick the coach, but in today's NBA, they kind of do. So that's, that's who I would, uh, that's who I would go to lunch with. I would buy you both lunch because I would want to meet Luca we as well. Yeah. Um, and as yeah, far as me, sure. I would have, I would want to have lunch with Jamie. So that's uh, that's my answer. Just <laughs> uh, well said, Evan. Well said. <laughs> there you go. But uh, you may have noticed I'm a, I'm a social media fanatic. I have 300,000 Twitter followers, uh, which is insane. But what's your favorite social media platform? And please don't say Facebook. Uh, it is not Facebook. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. You know, good. I, I, I think for me and for us, um, you know, when I started our business, uh, it was just me. And, um, and so we utilized LinkedIn in a, in a major way. And I think even before it, it, it um, got as much traction as it, it has, as it relates to like marketing business wise and things like that. And so, you know, I would just say that's really been effective for us, um, you know, business wise, and it's helped us get our, our message out there, maybe in a different way than, you know, um, data center, typically like companies in the data center space market what they're doing. And, and I think Jamie, you would certainly be, um, aware of this. You know, we looked about six years ago and said, Hey, we, we want to do this differently. You know, we think PDFs and articles while they're great, you know, there's, there's, it's much more interesting. And from my perspective to put faces with ideas and, and, you know, do some of the things we're doing here, it's a great way to share ideas. And, um, and so we've really tried to use LinkedIn to do that. It's really been helpful for us. So I'd, I'd probably say that is my favorite. Oh, I would, I would agree. And I, I find that if you haven't discovered and you're listening to creator mode, you got to check it out, turn that feature on. You can add videos to your LinkedIn uh, bio and, uh, you know, all kinds of live uh, options now. So it's really become a cool media destination. And thanks so much, David, for, for joining us. I really intrigued by, you, you know, what you're doing and your re the resources, you know, you've created. And I, I can't stop uh, 
uh, browsing datacenterhawk.com as we're actually on the show. There's just so much cool information there. So um, look forward to uh, meeting again in person somewhere around the, the, the country. Right on. Yeah, it's been, it's, this has been a great uh, time together today. So thank you for having me and certainly uh, respect what you all are doing and, um, you know, excited for the next one. Thank you so much, David. And guys, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast as much as I did, go ahead and check us out at jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers episodes. We release those every other week on Wednesday morning. So please go ahead and tune in. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell, and we'll see you there. And as always, guys, stay safe and happy networking.